Welcome back to yet another 213 Crispy video, and today we are doing a video on motor rebuilds, cleaning processes, and basically motor tuning. Um, and we're also going to be using a Sky RC brushless motor analyzer. And we're going to also talk about lubrication of your uh, brushless motor. So stay tuned for some tips and some performance things. And uh, also how to get the most out of your uh, brushless motors that you're going to have for any of your devices. So in this case, I'm using this for my uh, B6.1 uh, RC10 buggy. So stay tuned, guys. So we're going to start with unboxing our brushless motor analyzer. So inside the box we are going to get the following items. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but got your owner's manual, got the actual analyzer itself, and then inside this tab you're going to get some cables. So with the cable we are going to get a sensor wire. You're going to get three leads to go from the side to the top, which is where you're going to use to connect your motor to. Then you're going to get two power leads. One of them has an XT60 to a Tamiya plug, which I will not be using. And the other one has banana plugs and an XT60. So the XT60 is used to connect your power source, which will be on the side, to your right hand side. <clears throat> Plug that in, and then use a fully charged battery of your choice. I am using a Gold Dot 5000 milliamp 60C battery for this demonstration purposes. <clears throat> and then once you hook that up, that's going to automatically turn on the product and it's going to give you some prompts and displays as to how to function your unit. It's pretty self-explanatory but the menu is KV and the RPMs and also the amp draw for option one. The motor timing option <clears throat> oops wrong way motor timing is option number two then you can do motor noise level, which is option three. <clears throat> and then option four is the pull of the motor. So we're going to go through the first three. Um, <clears throat> the motor of choice that we are using to make our video is my <clears throat> Macklin Team Edition version two, the MRR. And this is a 17.5 motor and I have set the timing to the factory level of whenever I received it, um, which is roughly 34 degrees of timing. And we're gonna go over some things. So to demonstrate how this functions, we are going to start by plugging in everything on the side. Um, so we're gonna start with our motor lead, which plugs into the, sorry, our sen motor sensor wire, which plugs into the sensor connector. Very simple, straightforward, just like your ESCs and your motors. It's only going to go in one way. And then <clears throat> you have your three wires. It does not matter which order you plug these into, just as long as you know which color is plugged into which port. So option A is your closest, port B is your middle, and port C is your farthest one away. So now that we have connected all of our wires to our unit, then we are ready to start connecting our motor 
to our actual motor analyzer. So, so once you have your sensor wire connected to your motor, then you go in the order of how you have your leads. So, first one is A, and I'm going to face this one away. The middle one is B, which is my orange, which I'm going to face it this way. Blue, in my case, is C, which we will do over here. So, next thing you do is set it in the cradle, and then we're going to do, let's do, let's do noise first. So with the noise level, this is where things get a little, little tricky, um, especially with the setup on how this thing functions. But let me, let me go grab a scrap piece of paper real quick so I can write some numbers down and you guys can go along with me on this and we'll see how much this motor changes with us doing some tuning. So I'll be right back guys. Okay, so as I was stating before, we're going to start with our noise level first. So hit the button and it's going to tell you to press and turn to start it. So you hear a little bit of a rattle. It's actually rattling against this frame. This is where I was talking about how it's sensitive on the mount. So in this case, I'm getting 85 dB of noise. Well, yeah, I'm going to call it 85. <clears throat> so stock settings. <clears throat> we are at 83 decibels of noise. So, <clears throat> it's not terrible. It actually don't sound too bad. So, so now let's go ahead and we're going to check our motor timing. <clears throat> so, motor timing. Probably, I'm going to guess, 34, 36 degrees, somewhere right around there. So according to this, it's 37 degrees, and it's 37, 37, and 36. 37, 37, and 36 degrees. Average, A, D, B. So now, let's find out the all-important KV and amp draw that this motor does. So it's 2.1 amps. So let's do the KV first. So KV is 2781. RPMs is 20,582. And that is a 2.1 amp draw. Which is extremely low, might I add. So now let's talk about tuning a motor now that we've got a baseline we understand what we're working with now let's figure out what we can do to make this better so first things first disconnect everything set everything aside because you won't be touching this for a while and then we're going to talk about some basics on motor tuning skills so let me get this set up i'll be right back guys okay Got everything stripped apart real quick. So, broke it down to your stator, your rotor, your cap, your three screws. So, inside here will be spacers. These spacers are what makes your in play and also has a lot to do with your sensor board that is inside of here. So, some of these sensor boards are easier to get off than others. Some are a pain in the butt, but 
long story short, the closer you can get your stator, sorry, your rotor, which is this piece down here. Oops. <clears throat> okay. So, this is your sensor board, and inside your sensor board, which is way down here, it has three eyes. Those eyes detect the top of your stator. Sorry, that's the top. So, it, the top of your rotor. So, the closer you can get this to those eyes, the better off you're going to be when it comes to getting a higher number of timing out of your motor but also a consistent number so you want that as close as you can get it but you don't want it to rub that is what you don't want you want to get it as close as you can get it to that eye without actually rubbing the eye so that is one of the tricks some people will unsolder the eyes and move them around a little bit more to try to get something or gain a little bit more it's mainly more of your lower end motors have really bad sensor locations which will throw off like one of your three leads it may have let's say I'm gonna use the 37 timing so it may be 37 36 and 30 so somebody may want to unsolder the I for C and move it uh, accordingly to get it to balance out so the ba more balanced you have your eyes the better performance you're going to get with your motor so with these shims you can go and buy shims from the manufacturer, so like this case, this is Macklin .12 motor spacers. Um, some motors will come with them, some won't. It's personal preference. Um, like I said, this one came with the smaller one, which is .006, and that's .012, so basically double the thickness. And that's really the difference from this motor versus the other motor. So. Uh, if I go and put the other one back in, I'll have just a little bit of play, and that little bit of play can make a difference. Um, also, your screws that come with a lot of your motors from the factory are steel. And how you know that is just run it by your magnet, and you notice it catches it. So what happens is, is once you go to put your motor back together and you run these through here, these metal screws can impede and change the magnet field which is why they come some people will sell aluminum screw kits for your motors so everybody is all about aluminum screws and ceramic bearings the bearings being clean and lubed is probably the most important thing out of all of this and what I use for my lubrication is Remington rim oil very simple cheap product I have it in this little tiny droplet container and you can get a small container that's I think two fluid ounces at Walmart for $1.97 so it's a lot cheaper but it actually works really well it holds up to the heat because it's made for firearms but it does a really good lubrication the biggest thing I have to stress if you are going to use Remington oil is make sure oops is make sure that you carry brake parts cleaner with you and clean your bearings out before you lube them every time you lube it because the dirt that's inside them is what will kill a bearing so as long as you keep them clean they will work just as efficient as your ceramic bearings because a lot of your ceramic bearings are steel graced with ceramic ball bearings inside of it so it's not a true ceramic bearing but there might be a little bit of a benefit there somebody may argue with me but I have not really seen the benefit of truly having it but some people swear by them so the aluminum screws, I can see, because it impedes your magnet field, you're actually going to get a little bit more RPMs just by swapping out your screws. So we're going to test that theory out today, too. So Remington oil, clean your bearings, make sure they're lubed really well, and then we're going to mess with timing. So I'm going to put all this back together, and I'm going to put the factory washer back in versus my thicker one, and I'm going to show you the end play difference. So let me put this back together, and I'll bring you guys back. So I went ahead and bumped up the timing, reassembled it, threw it back on here just to speed up the video. I bumped up the timing to 40 degrees on the back of the motor, and it is reading 
42, 43, and 41. So this is going to be, I'm going to call this 40, what do we call this, 42 degrees? Yeah. So 42 degrees, that's going to be 42, 43, and 41. Let's go ahead and let's do a KV run. So notice the audio changed a little bit, but so did the numbers. So we had 28, 76 for KV. We had RPMs at 21, 289, and that's only 2.2 amps. So we increased our timing by about 5 degrees, and basically none of these numbers changed. So I am going to turn this up to roughly 50. And the only reason why I'm going to go straight to 50 is because I know the magic number for this motor is around 52, 53 degrees. So what I'm looking for is actually 6 amps of draw. which would be down here. Six amps of draw is what I'm looking for. And a KV, the KV I'm not that worried about. It's more of amperage. Um, but also timing, low 50s is prefer of what I'm looking for. So now we've set this back up. Let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and check our timing real quick. That's the hum of the, the bass. But hear how much louder it sounds just for the timing. And the timing doesn't give it full throttle. So so now that we've bumped this up, I'm at 55 degrees timing. I'm going to tell you right now that's too high. So I'm going to turn this down just a tick. I'm trying to make this video kind of quick for you guys. We're talking very minimal changes once you get this high up it does not take much to change I mean I moved it just just the minutest of change and that noise you hear it's the rattle it's the way this chassis is built with these notches it's fallen into the plastic and rubbing so I'm looking for around 52 degrees is what I'm always what I'm shooting for 53 I'm gonna call that good so 53 degrees timing that's 54 what was that 54 54 and 51 so something happened with my third one it's probably because I took the bigger shim out went with the shorter one gave me a little bit more play so I'm okay with it. It's not that far off. Um, now let's go and do a KV run and amp. Oops. But you can hear that ain't right. So I'm at 5 amps at 53 degrees, so that's 33, 38 at 23,703 RPMs, and that's at 5.1 amps.
So after some finagling off camera, got it down to 6 amps, which is where I really want it to be. So the magical numbers for this motor at 6 amps is a KV at 3457 RPMs at 24,202 and that's at 6.1 amps and I'm okay with that. So now let's go and check our timing and I'm gonna suspect this to be around 50 I'm gonna say mid 50s 54 55 degrees somewhere around there 53 that's average so that's 54 50 what is that 54 55 and 51 yeah so we're not far off from our last run when it was reading 53 degrees but the amp was a little low and it don't take much that's the difference from one setting to another so that was one, that was one, that was one. So now let's check, let's check the noise. So the noise level is 80. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. So at eighty-seven dBs of noise. So let's go over some data, so you guys can see in real time what I'm talking about. So, and this is the difference from a experienced motor builder. Oops, wrong way versus somebody else like you guys that might be tinkering with some stuff. So <clears throat> stock settings with the motors 37 degrees of timing and we were only getting 20,500 RPMs and that's 2781 KV rating. That's basically your torque and that's your RPMs obviously. And that's only 2.1 amps. This is basically factory settings top. Then we upped it to 42 degrees of timing we only increased about a hundred KV rating, but we gained um, 800 RPMs, and we only gained 0.1 amp. Um, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. So from factory settings to fully tuned at six amp draw, I'm at 53 degrees of timing, but I gained what is that? 600 KV difference. Yeah, we'll say 600. 600 KV rating, higher, 4,000 RPM increase, but we're basically running triple the amount of amperage. And the motor v loudness of uh, noise is a few decibels higher. I'm okay with that. Um, you might be able to get that down by shimming it a little bit better, taking some more shim into it or some out. So now that we've got our base line figured out for timing, let's swap out our screws for the aluminum screws, run this same test again. I'm going to see if any of these numbers change. Um, it's more of a curiosity thing than anything else. So with that, I am just going to be replacing... Now, you know what? I'll replace them all. So it comes with five. We're going we're gonna to put all five in. So I'll bring you guys back once I get that done. Went ahead and swapped out all of the screws for the aluminum screws. And here's the old ones, as you can tell. Um, first thing I noticed, there's an obvious weight difference from these steel screws to the aluminum ones that are installed. That is the only change that I have done. I did not change the timing. I did one screw at a time on the timing plate on the back side, so timing should not have changed. And let's go ahead and run ourselves a test. This amp changed slightly, but I don't think enough's changed. So let's go ahead 
and write these numbers down. So KV is 35.67 RPMs is 24.969 and that's at 6.2 amps. Now let's go ahead and do a timing run real quick. Make sure our timing did not change. That way we know the variable of timing should be the same. And that way you know just by changing two aluminum screws I'm gaining 100 kV, I'm gaining 800 RPMs. So yes, an average of 53 degrees timing. And that's 53, what was that, 54, and 52. So I don't know why it changed on the RPMs a little bit different from one to the other, but what matters is the overall timing is still the same. Amp draws basically probably going to be a little bit higher because of that draw from the aluminum screws. So with that, the, hopefully you guys learned something about motor tuning, how to adjust and modify your stock motor or modified for that matter. Um, quickly I need to go over some temperature guidelines and some warnings. Make sure that you guys are tuning your motor accordingly to your track and use the appropriate gearing. I cannot stress that enough, especially now that you're getting six amps of draw to your motor. You want to make sure that you have it set accordingly because if you over pinion your motor or under pinion it, whatever the case is, you can overheat your motor. So make sure you monitor your temperatures. You do not want to get over 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Try to stay around that 150 range so that way you have a little bit of a buffer. So if you don't have a temperature gun, get one. Um, make sure you run a motor fan on your motor because obviously you're running more amps. That means you're going to generate more heat. So yes, take the precautions and take it serious once you start modifying your motors because you will burn up a motor if you don't pay enough attention to what you're doing. So make sure you geared appropriately, make sure you monitor your temperatures, put a fan on it, and go out and have some fun. This way you're getting free horsepower and power basically to your buggy that your competitors are running. They just may not have a motor analyzer to get every little bit of ounce out of it. And you can see the difference just by a few degrees how much your motor is going to change. So with that, we're going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys learned something today. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for it, future content for this kind of stuff. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one, guys.